Hello there, YouTube. Thanks for popping by the old Pick 6 Podcast YouTube channel. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn on alerts so you know when we go live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Wednesday, June 15th, if you are listening to the podcast in audio form. If you are staring at myself and the handsome tan face of Pete Prisco, on, the te- on your television or your phone or wherever else you get your YouTubes, it is Tuesday, June 14th, and it's the offseason, which means it's time to rank NFL players, as you do every year, Pete. It's been too long. What's up, buddy? I'm the grandfather of those in more ways than one, probably, except I don't have the kids, so I can't <laughs> really be a grandfather. You've probably um, got some illegitimate top 100 yeah. list running around. <laughs> I started that way back in the day. It was top 50 initially. And then we expanded it. I expanded it uh, at some point to top 100. But yeah, it's uh, it. Look, I haven't been on in a while with you, so I'm sure you're going to pick it apart, and that's okay. We're going to pick it apart today at you know four o'clock later on than uh, on HQ. But before we get to that, oh, I haven't been on in a while. Oh boy, <laughs> our producer Debo actually yes. has a girlfriend. <laughs> what in the? Oh! Hell? Oh! Oh! Debo. Not only that, months after he meets her, he's cruising with the family. <laughs> I never took my lessons. Uh, did he ever listen to me, Brinson? He no, did not. no, he did not. What was your What was your number one lesson? It was like a bunch of lessons. one of them was he probably took her to a nice dinner the first date, or maybe yeah, don't not. go maybe to maybe dinner on the first date. Not a fancy dinner, I said. Then you did you go on a fancy dinner on the first date? I went to Sparrow in Fort Lauderdale. You know that spot? I don't. It's on the top of the Dalmar Hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That now. was your first date with her? That's not really a that's not really a, a restaurant though. That's more of a, a rooftop bar. Yeah, so maybe I did. You know they went on a um subconsciously take your advice, Pete. They went yeah, on a you trip right. to uh where'd you go again, Debo in Tennessee? Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg. Together. Oh, boy. Couples that's, vacation that's, to Gatlinburg. That's okay. That's that's okay. That's okay. The the one that's not okay is the family trip eight months in. What do you? What are you? You have no idea, Brinson. He has no idea what he's getting into. He really doesn't. He really doesn't. <laughs> You'll be driving around Florida for six days during Thanksgiving. <laughs> Tell him all about it, Brinson. Oh, I don't think I will. Uh, I think he does. I mean, he produces the show. He understands. By the way, the comments are all enthusiastic about Pete's triumphant return to the podcast. Um, Devo, did you think for any for a second that Pete might uh, just gloss over the pre pre podcast discussion? No, no, it was it was clear, but uh, it's just something I understand with going back to Pete. I mean, people were clamoring for a Pete and Devo podcast, dating podcast, back early in the pandemic. That's true. I would listen to that. Get myself in trouble. <laughs> yes, yes, you would. <laughs> no, not um, that. You and you and Brady Quinn can give dating advice on a podcast to Devo, and just see how that goes. No, um, I'm staying away from that. I gave Debo my dating advice, and it worked. Clearly, it's he didn't paid go off. to a fancy dinner. He didn't go to a fancy dinner. He went to a, a, a rooftop lounge, and now eight months later, he's cruising with the family. He's it so worked. comfortable, Pete, that he popped on here and made a reference to my girlfriend. Right. So comfortable that he even forgot that because he definitely didn't mean to say that in front of you. He would prefer not to have you hear that. So that way, like next time you're in the office, you're going to bring it up. Oh, man, it's just oh, it's deep. It's going to be a whole it's, thing. It's, it's, it's like an alley-oop for, for uh, Andrew Wiggins. How about that? <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get to your top. Unless you want to continue on, Debo's. No, no. I, I got him enough. We'll, we'll, we'll let this whole thing play out through the course of his relationship. That's going to be the fun part. You know, the big year party he has to celebrate. They've dated for a year. Family flies in. You know, Debo did, did like kind of, it was not a very specific, it was like eh, eight months. It was like, a, I was, I expected more specificity from Debo, who is. Well, when you, when you've been like, you know what this is like? This is like a guy who batted 120 his entire life and now he finally <laughs> hit a couple of home runs. I wasn't, I wasn't batting 120. <laughs> 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 the Mendoza line and the Debo line are the same thing. Debo line is much higher. Debo, what did you say? Debo, Debo is like angrily defending his batting average. Yeah. Like 10 How dare you? 1941. 
I'm a 250 huh? hitter. <laughs> hey, Debo, another few words of advice. Just admit your batting average was 120 in case this works out for you. <laughs> okay. That's right. Yeah, you don't want to be bragging about hitting 300. <laughs> no, no, you're a 120 hitter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe maybe 120. Maybe like a <laughs> couple of singles. That's it, I swear. <laughs> as far as you know. Um. Anyway, we definitely would get ourselves in trouble if we continued down this path. So instead... Let's talk about your top 100 list. Um, like I know we get we we give each other a ton of crap, um, but grudgingly, I must admit, this is a hard thing to do. And generally speaking, Pete, you do a pretty good job of it. Um, what was the hardest part about the top 10 uh, this year? So you have for the it'll be on the website cbsports.com. Obviously, you have Aaron Donald number one, Rogers, Mahomes, Josh Allen, Cooper Cup. Oh, it is on the website already. Tom yeah, Brady yeah. at six, TJ Watt at seven, Trent Williams at eight, Miles Garrett at nine, and Jalen Ramsey at 10. Three Rams players, champions, they deserve it. Um, what was the hardest part about that top 10? Well, I think, you know, how do you rank the quarterbacks? I think that was tough. Um, you could, look, you could make a case for Patrick Mahomes to be ahead of Aaron Rodgers. I get it. If you had a draft, you draft them ahead of Aaron Rodgers based on his age. But I thought Rodgers last year was the better quarterback. Mahomes slipped a little bit last year. He's still a great play. Slipped by his standards, by the way. And then I think Allen right behind Mahomes and then Brady. Did you, did you consider year. putting Allen above Mahomes? Thought about it, yeah. I was kind of surprised you didn't. Yeah. Look, I went back and, and A, watched some more of Mahomes, A, and B, and then looked more at his numbers. His, he, we think he had a terrible year last year. He didn't. Yeah. So, no. I mean, it was close. They're close. That That was tough. Uh, as far as Ramsey, you know, and you know, Cup wasn't even in my top 100 last year. That's bad. That's a bad miss. But was he a top 100 player last year going into the season? He had three um, touchdown catches. Uh, was he that? You would have said Robert Woods, him. There's, you know, that group, the same group, right? You, you look at it. He, I think he had 93 catches and three touchdowns last year. I'm trying to find your top 100. From... It's bad when I look at it because a lot of these guys aged out. That's the problem with these. Hmm. Russell Wilson at eight. Crazy. He uh, Josh Josh Allen at ten last year. Um, I'm gonna, I just want to see who your last receiver in was because I think that is will be that's telling. Calvin Ridley 567 and <laughs> no Cooper. Well, Cubs. that's that's <laughs> that's, that's, that by, that's his own that's his own doing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, for know, sure. Uh, um, uh, DJ Moore at 89. He's right in that area again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was that was it was tough with Cooper Cup because he didn't have a great year the year before. It was good. It wasn't great. So he's made a huge jump. Jump. And, and but I put he's the best receiver in the league. You can't argue that right now. No, numbers wise, everything he does, he's the best receiver in the league. Wait. And, and, and yeah. so yep. I had him. I had him at five. You know, I want to. You know, I skew younger. I like to skew younger, but it's tough. When you do that, Justin Jefferson to me is going to have a monster. I thought he would have a monster year last year. He did, but I think even better this year. I really do. I well, think with, with, the, with the Vikings, I mean, it's not hard to envision a situation where the offense is just simply more productive because Mike Zimmer's not holding it back, right? I mean, like correct. I, correct. I was and, and, and it with, works. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And it works with with the way they're going to run the ball and that zone scheme and O'Connell's bringing the Rams offense in. I think it works. Okay, so I mean, do you think that? with what they're going to run it will so like because i mean they basically they ran a lot of that stuff they ran a lot of that stuff last year remember they ran a lot of the same stuff oh yeah yeah. he's a better he's a better offensive coach well they built their offensive line basically for that kubiak style scheme right i mean so i was going to ask you like do you think that there'll be any issues transitioning um type of scheme almost okay it's a lot of the same stuff well, that's, I mean, that's huge. Though. Like, that's what you need because you, you got those athletic guys who can, um, you know, who get out of the edge. And I mean, It's not um, exactly the same. Like, right, they do not. some of the same stuff. But I think O'Connell's a good offensive coach. They're going to be better on offense. Um, yeah, Cup's the easy top five. I mean, no brand of top five with the win. Yeah, there played. was nobody. The only one in the top ten that you could make a case against maybe would be Ramsey. And, and, and I just thought he played so well last year. And not just in coverage, the things that they asked him to do, he did so many different things. He was great in the slot. He's great lining up and playing the run. I mean, he was he, he was as good last year as he's been at any point in his career. So I, 
The only other cornerback I have, a, you know, that I, J- Jair Alexander is the next down, level down. He's down 25, but um, he's probably a little, you know, he's as good a cover player as Ramsey. I just think Ramsey, what he did last year was was huge for that defense. So when you did these wide receivers, you got Devontae Adams as the first, or second receiver, excuse me, after the out of side of the top 10. Adams at 11, Justin Jefferson at 13, uh, Tyreek Hill at 17, and Jamar Chase at 18. They're tough to separate. I'll be honest with you. Well, I, I was just sort of wondering how you dealt with, at, like, the trades, you know, like, I mean, like, there's no way that either Adams or Tyreek Hill are going to be as good and as productive as they were in their previous landing spots. I mean, like, it's just, I mean, it's almost impossible to, like, you know, Adams is going from a two-time MVP, and Tyreek Hill is going from Andy Reid to Patrick Mahomes to Tua, and, and you know. Yeah, I'm not so sure about Devontae Adams, because, and that, I know Waller's in that offense and Renfro's there, but I, I think the way Josh McDaniels calls plays, he'll make it a, 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 a real a, a, thing a focus on getting the ball to Adams I, I'm not so sure his numbers are going to go down you know Hill his numbers shouldn't go down but it's all on Tua yeah. and you know what can Tua do and I, I saw him a couple weeks ago I was there for their mini camp and first day he was dreadful second day he looked much better kind of like how he is right he's inconsistent and that was the day when he came out and defended himself remember he and, and Mike McDaniel defended him that's because the day before I was there I went on the air. I, part and one, I was one of them, and I, I said he wasn't very good. And he's gonna, you know, that's. And so they were very defensive, and nobody said anything to me, but I could tell that's what they must have seen it. Yeah, they clearly and saw so, the headline and were like, "How two was great? What are you talking about?" Right, right. I mean, so the, the one thing about Tyreek Hill and like and Jalen Waddle too in that offense is, if Mike McDaniel is as good a play caller as we would presume, and I mean, obviously it's different if you're, you know. You got you got to handle the head coaching duties along with all that other stuff. It makes it a lot harder. But it's to me, it's so easy to picture Tyree Kill and Waddle like running short crossing routes and or just short you know, short routes getting into open space and Tua just having a an easy, quick, short to intermediate throw, not being forced to push the ball down the field too much. Like if he does that, he'll be fine. I think. Yeah, you still got to push the ball, and, and like there was a couple plays where he pushed it and made a couple shots. But the first day he threw, hit a guy on the sideline and underthrew him, and it was picked off. It just <laughs> He's got it's consistent and and he throw his mechanics. You know, I, I didn't go there to see him booting out. That's not what I wanted to see because he could do that. Any, I mean, most quarterbacks who can move can do that. I wanted to see him stand in the pocket and fire some shots, and they were limited. And that's that's why I was disappointed. But Hill's still a special player. Of all these receivers, Hill does what the rest of them can't. Puts the fear of God in everybody with his speed. He's yeah. different than the rest of them. Did you think about putting Jalen Waddle on the list? Is he made? He's pretty high he's, up on the honorable mention. He's on. He's honorable mention. Yeah, I thought about it. And and I think next year he'll probably be in. You know, it, it's like that one year. Remember when I put Jeffrey Simmons in? And I think you even gave me crap about it at one point. Um, I don't think I gave you crap about it, but it was like, he, I mean, you were you were, ahead of, you were ahead of the curve on it for sure. Yeah, and he's now a dominant player. So, yes. so I think sometimes you got to try and look ahead a little bit too. I mean, injuries factored in. I had a hard time with a lot of the injured guys. Like, I didn't put – Christian McCaffrey and Michael Thomas in the top 100. But I, I wouldn't. I don't think they belong in there. In fact, the 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 biggest omission and the one that I'll kill you on and like I don't. Or, no, it's not an omission. Sorry, but like the like I don't get DeAndre Hopkins on this list. And I told you that when you were making the list. Like, of yeah, course, and I had a hard time with him too. 71 is way too high. The dude suspended six games and he didn't play last year. When he played, he was their offense was different with him on the field. You know what I mean? He was yeah. different. So that's why I put him there. But again, he's another guy going down, and and I think he's a guy that you got to be. You know, you look at his yards per catch. If that, if I, I think that number's gone down each year recently, or or close to it. It's not what he used to. And he never was a burner. So yeah, that one's tough. He could be on the slope down, but but the other side of that is he could also be on the slope up. Maybe I mean, he could come back and play. He could come back and play eleven games and be and right. put up twelve hundred yards. 80, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, like he's so, that. I mean, it's not like they 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 have a boatload of receivers out there anymore either. You know, the Kirk's gone, and uh, so they got issues. So yeah, yeah it's you know, right, so like because I mean, I think that's that's important criteria too. That like, and I think you do a good job of it. Of you, you like, you don't want to be, you don't want to like just toss Hopkins aside, and then he comes back and has a big year, and then you look like an idiot. Like that's part of. The, I mean. It's part well, of and you look. I'd like. I like to go younger if I can. But at some point, the guy earned the right to be there, and he and and he can still. He's still going. If he's if he plays those eleven games, he's going to get 
the numbers. He will in that offense. And he'll probably be higher, too, on the players list. Oh, much higher. Yeah. Much higher. All right, maybe 71 is – all right. I guess 71 is pretty low for a guy of his still set. Um, somebody in the chat asked, curious where Justin Herbert is. Um, he's 20th. And that might not be high enough, but he also hasn't made the playoffs. And he's one spot ahead of Joe Burrow. I would actually argue that scoreboard, Matthew Stafford should be ahead of both of them. But, no. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Well, you're you you're you're the Matt, Matt Stafford fan club. It's a Hall of Famer, man. You got to... <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. That didn't take long. No, didn't. Uh, <laughs> look, look. I have a hard time between Burrow and Herbert. I wanted to put him as a tie, but I didn't do that. Uh, you know me. I can't pick between the two of them. I I, just, I I think they're both great. I think they're both going to be great. I just went with Herbert. The 69 touchdown over the course of two seasons, 69 and two seasons. And, yeah, Burrow went to the Super Bowl. But I, I think when you watch him play, Herbert has been the better player throwing the football. And, and you know, Burrow's got the fire in the belly and the leadership and all that. He's going to be a great player. But he played behind a horrible offensive line, not that – Herbert's has been great his, his time, entire time in the league either. But uh, I think we're going to see these two guys be Brady and Manning going forward. Oh. Which one you take? Which one you take him? And is Burrow Brady, I think, I guess, in the – is that the yeah. – Yeah, and Herbert would be Manning, yeah. Although yeah. Herbert – Peyton wished he had an arm like Herbert. Seriously, the guy's a laser. Man, I could not have been more wrong on a, on a player. Coming you in. know what's amazing about that? When I was at Miami camp, I was talking to Joe Rhodes, who I – you know, down here on the radio, I used to play for the Dolphins. Great dude. I said, Joe, could you imagine if Justin Herbert was in this team right now? Dude. Oh my gosh. I mean, for, was... they're not hiring a brand new coach because nobody's getting fired because you got freaking Justin Herbert. Oh, I guess, I mean, Anthony Lynn to get canned after uh, after his rookie season. Um, if you were doing a draft, so I think Mahomes would be one. Allen is two. If you're like, a, like, you're, like for the future. Like, right, franchise. for the future. For 10 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you're not they, taking Mahomes their Mahomes one. Mahomes one, Allen two, Herbert three. Burrow four? Burrow four. And then maybe you start talking about Rodgers or uh, even if it's Then you probably, maybe somebody, you take Lamar, maybe. Yeah. You know? Um, young, you have to know how many young. years Roger, like you, like you can't take Brady because you're probably getting one year, you know? like just, Right. And Rodgers, you're probably only getting two or three. Right. Exactly. Whereas with, you know, Lamar, you have a 34. I mean, I, I mean, like in all seriousness, I think Stafford should have been ahead of Lamar, but that's you know whatever. I mean, you could. It's close. They're close. They're, I mean, how far? How many spots behind are they? He's only like a couple behind him, eight or nine something, isn't he? Forty-eight. So he's four, Fourteen behind him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, that I probably at one point had them closer together and moved guys around. You Russ, know, Russ, that, forty-two. I mean, Stafford tied Trevor Lawrence for leading the league in interceptions with 17, FYI. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, you just discount that. <laughs> like you always say, interceptions are proof that a guy's, you know, trying to make the pass, trying to make the big-time throw. Differently if, if Tart had caught the ball in the playoff game? I keep saying that. Of course, yes, of course. If Tom Brady comes back and beats him, we're talking about it differently. Yeah, I don't know. I just think... I think, um, yeah, look, 48 is good for Matt Stafford. I mean, he's definitely a top 50 player. I bet he's higher on the players list, too. I bet he's, like, top 20. What about Russell Wilson? I mean, I, I had a hard time with that because he didn't play that well last year. He wasn't that good last year. And, like, I mean, he got traded. You know, like, <laughs> like a team traded a franchise quarterback. You don't see that very often. I guess Matthew Stafford got traded the year before. but Yeah, but the Lions were in a different situation. But then Seahawks are now in that situation, too, so. Um, we'll you had, see what you Russell Wilson the ninth last year. Yeah, he didn't I play. This that is a fair all. spot. Again, yeah, I would have. Again, he could be higher. Will he could be higher after this year? Oh, for sure. I mean, they they got it. I mean, Hackett's a good offensive coach. They have really good, you know, players on that offense. If if he's not higher than this, something something's wrong. Yeah, if he if he takes it, if he goes down, then like there are going to be questions asked in Denver, especially Correct. especially when somebody just paid four point five billion dollars for that franchise. Correct. Uh, all right, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we will ask Pete about the running backs on this list. All right, so Jonathan Taylor is obviously your top running back. Wait, what? No, you have Derrick Henry ahead of him? Why'd you do that? 
Because if Derrick Henry had played the whole season, he was going to lead the league in right. He had nine. What do you have? Nine hundred and thirty yards or whatever it was. In, yeah, because he ran games. him into the ground. No, he got hurt. He got hurt because he had too many carries. No, oh, he got hurt. Give me a break. He, I mean, and, and, okay, twenty-two. And where's Taylor? He's right behind him. Yeah, they're pretty close together. I'm just trying to draw. Up I mean, you're nitpicky. Yeah, 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 I know. That's I mean, that's what I have to do with the list. I have to nitpick. I mean, I did say that the five point four to four point three is concerning. Yeah, in yards, but his offensive line isn't very good either. And I mean, they don't have like they don't have AJ Brown now. Like, I, I mean, Taylor's offensive line is better. Yeah, way better. Um. After that, you've got – who's the next running back on the list? I had it a second ago. Camara, maybe? No, I think it's – um yeah, it is Camara at 45. I was thinking about that. I was going to give you crap about Camara at 45. Oh, no, Cook, Dalvin Cook no, it's at 41. Cook. It's, yeah, it's Cook. Cook at 41. Cook should be ahead of Camara, I think. Yeah. Um, Camara was down a little bit last year. Oh, yeah. And I mean, He wasn't the same guy, and the, the offense wasn't the same. And, and, okay, I know he had Taysom Hill as a quarterback at times, a bad – Bad quarterback situation. Had injuries on the offensive line. Like he Payton wasn't the same. Now? And he wasn't the same player. I, but I'm saying, like, you don't have Sean Payton as your play caller now, and you're going to be have the same quarterback situation that you basically had, where you know Jameis is certainly an upgrade over Taysom Hill if he plays the whole season. But he's coming off a major injury. He's not necessarily like a great short, you know, uh, 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 like running back passer. You know, like you know, like Philip Rivers, right. great swing pass. Like, that's not really that was Jesus. the problem. That was the, always the knock on Jameis is. He'd always go for the home run. Coaches told me that coached them. They said, you can take a check down now and then, Jameis, and he won't. Yeah. Uh, Nick Chubb at 47 is a good spot, too. I, I even think you could have, I mean, again, nitpicking here. I think you could have slid Chubb ahead of uh, Kamara just based on his season last year. And, but like, I started thinking about it. I was like, Kamara's too high. And I was like, well, I mean, he is Alvin Kamara. Like, he's still right. a special player. Yeah, just You could you could. Okay, you could switch Chubb and Kamara, and there would be no uproar. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the other – was that it? For One knock on Chubb, though, and I, I do think this is a knock, is no matter who runs behind that line, runs. Yeah. Kareem Hunt's, like, awesome when he's the only running back. And the, when Darius Johnson went in, he ran. That's true. Yeah, that is that is a fair knock. Uh, Mixon at 89. I don't, I, I don't have a problem with it just looking at the running backs on the list. And then I think would you have McCaffrey and – Who's the other guy you mentioned? Um, there's not a lot of running backs on that list. <laughs> oh, you know, you know who will be on the list? Who's on the list last year? Because I, I just happened to spot him a, a few minutes ago and I was looking at it. Fell off the list. I think gets back on the list next year. Aaron Jones. Yeah, he he was just off of it. I in fact there were some some ish, you know some of these things I did where I played with him, had him in, took him out. Had, he just, sure. yeah, he, he could be back on it next year. Uh, I mean, Austin Eckler was on the list, too. He's definitely definitely deserving of being a top 100 player. Yeah, I mean, he had a, a phenomenal year, and I, I I don't think he'll be on the NFL top 100 list, the players list. You watch. He's probably taken Tyler Lockett's place as the most underrated player in football. Or Robert Woods. Like, it was Robert Woods, and he got a little bit overrated. He's been banged up. And then it was Tyler Lockett. Now I think it's Austin Eckler. I mean, Eckler had a phenomenal year last yeah, year. Yeah, he's what incredible. He had 20 touchdowns? Yeah, and he can, he can run between the tackles. He's not the scat back that people thought he was. He's an incredible receiver, explosive. Um, so my theory on Jones specifically, though, is that he's going to be the guy who soaks up most of the Devontae Adams usage and that they're going to split him out a ton, move him all over the place, run Dylan out of the backfield primarily, and let Jones be more of a pass catcher. Your thoughts? Yeah, I don't think so. I think they'll catch passes. And they'll do it once in a while. I just, I think they're going to use their backfield the way they did last year, and that that's why he gets hurt by that because Dylan carried the ball more and more, you know. Yeah, and, and that well, hurt. So him, who's, so. I mean, who's it like? Was it Christian Watson and Sammy Watkins and yeah. Lazard, Alan Lazard? Yeah, who's, yeah. yeah. Who's going to go with that? Like that's going to work? Yeah, that's what they're going to do. If they win thirteen games with those receivers, Rodgers was getting a third trade MVP. They'll win. The defense is going to be good next year. Yeah, it should be better. A lot better. You, you would think so. Yeah, um, I don't see anybody. Quentin Williams, interesting. He's on that. Um, no, yeah, there, there's guys there's that were just on names the, on there. On that, on that honorable mention, like nobody that I'm like. Well, how did he not make it? You could have made the case for Hunter Renfro getting in, but I mean, again, like you look at the wide receiver, just knowing that he's probably not going to get back. Like after you know, he had a huge. I didn't year. put my. I should have put. I, I 
left out Mike Williams off the honorable mention. He could have been on there. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't even on the honorable mention. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, I would have put Terry McLaurin or... Um, I had it? Terry McLaurin on the bottom a couple different times and took him back out, rotated him in. It's yeah, I would have I would have tossed Hopkins out personally and thrown like McLaurin or uh, even Waddle uh, on there instead. See, uh, and like, okay, I'll give you an example. There's going to be guys that are second year players going into this season that are going to be on this list next year that I don't have in here. You know, such as like I. Well, I mean, Trevor Lawrence has a chance to be. Yeah, I think he could definitely get on the list. Yeah. I mean, he's one of those guys. Did you see the article on CBS that said that the Jets could be this year's Bengals? Yeah, I don't see that. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> no, I don't see that. I'm trying not to knock the kid, whoever wrote it. I, I don't like. I, I don't. I don't want to. No, but you know, you know what that's about. You, he's, he's living in the land of Brinton, writing these outrageous stories to get clicks. <laughs> that's the land of Brinton <laughs> these days, buddy. I got an alert. It was like the crazy thing that you won't believe happened with NFL player. I'm like, that's breach right that. Like that's very good. Clicked it. It was a bank breach. Um, yeah. Like, like Patrick Sertan, I wanted to put him on. I badly wanted to put him on the list and it just didn't work out. He will be on the list next year. Yeah. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah, Panay Stool on probably on the list too next year. Next year, Panay Stool will be on the list. I, I, you know, I think maybe like a guy like Christian Darasaw in the left tackle in Minnesota, who they rave about, you know, we had Rick Spielman work with us at the, uh, during the draft, he oh, loves right, him. He yeah. thinks he's going to be a star. Um, you know, I just think certain guys are, that go in from year one to year two, and then year three take their jumps. And so that's that's the kind of the guys you got to look at. I mean, Micah Parsons is probably if he continues to do what he did, he's going to be a top five player. You got a top. He was eleventh, and like I saw that and didn't even budge. If anything, I was like he could yeah. have been top ten. I mean, yeah, it's incredible season. Um, the, the other thing too is like if you're going to put, you know, you. Like you're gonna move Panay Sewell on the list. Somebody's got to come off. You know, it's like, like the list gets bigger. So you got to pick who you would take off. Who? Well, who okay, you... here's another one. Javon Holland will be on that. He's under my honorable mention. He'll be on the list next year. That kid's got star potential. Was Jesse Bates on the list last year? Probably was, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. In fact, he might have. He didn't play as well last year. This year, people forget that Jesse had problems early. He admitted it. Remember, he was all caught up in the contract situation. Yep. Didn't play as well. Then really came on. In the postseason, and then the final part of the season, in the, in the playoffs and Super Bowl, but he didn't play as well last year. The, the guys that are, don't ever get to do maybe nationally and maybe by the players that they should are Hyde and Poyer. Yeah, those two. That's the best safety duo in the league. That's what get, That's what makes the Bills' defense run is those two safeties. Yeah, yeah. Both of them can do so many things, and and Hyde's a little bit better, I think. But but both of them are really good. And you know what? That's why you don't draft safeties in the first round. You find you can go them. Get them. Yeah, you can yeah. get them for cheap, or you can get them. Yeah. You can get them at a, a discounted price relative to to drafting Correct. in the first round. Um, who all right, who would be your most likely candidate to like who, somebody who is on the list down at the bottom? And you're like that guy's probably not going to be on it next year. Ooh, yeah, you know that that one pains me. But what about Levante David? I mean. Mm. That's a possibility. And I love Levante. He's been, love one of my Levante. Favorite, he's been one of my favorite guys to deal with in this league for a long time. But let's be honest about it. You're getting up in the years. Yeah. I mean. I mean, Bobby Wagner could, you know. Bobby Wagner's another one. I I had, by the way, I had some versions of this where he wasn't in it. And, I and then you thought about around. Bobby at B-Wag's 45 tweeting you and being like, oh, really? Oh, no. Oh, really? No. <laughs> no. I would have said, okay. Well, he, look, he's not in Seattle anymore, but remember the whole Legion of Boom blocked me at one point on Twitter. Oh, that's so right. You got Richard Sherman. Yeah. You. And Cam Chancellor blocked me, and I think Earl Thomas, well, I don't care, but he did do, I think. Um, yeah. I think we asked, didn't we ask Richard Sherman about you on this podcast? Of the yeah, podcast? I think he did. Yeah. He's like, he didn't like Now he's in the media. I know. Oh, that's right. I was tweeting about Stafford in the Hall of Fame. He, yeah, he agrees. <laughs> that's what I was joking with him too. He's like, he's like, I was like, Pete, I was like, finally, you and Pete agree on something. He was like, yeah. um, I mean, Watson, Deshaun Watson, eighty three. I, I know it's tough. I, mean, I didn't. I had a hard time with that. That's a real. It's a hard one. I think he's going to get suspended for a long time, maybe uh, the year. Ooh. But when does it come? That's the question. Do they wait for stuff to play out and then suspend them? I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna do. This is my opinion. I think they're gonna give him eight games with an asterisk, 
that they can come back and give him more at next offseason after all these civil lawsuits are resolved. That that's a that's a possibility. That is a possibility. Okay, oh, then the league, do then you, the league do you let him play the him. year? Let him play the year and then hammer him after the civil lawsuit. Well, you, you just can't let him play the whole season and then deal with it. Like the the outrage will be wild. I mean, considering there's a new lawsuit every week. I mean, they, they really want to play this season out where this could become every week. There's another one, another one, another one. I mean, you can't do that. Yeah. It, it, I mean, you, Baker Mayfield should show up and play. No way he's going to – I mean, they are they have to get rid of – like, it's, it's the ship sailed, right? You would think, but what, what are you going to play Jacoby Brissett? If, he, if, you don't, if Watson got suspended for the entire year, what would the Browns do? I mean, you'd think they would make up with Baker and say, look, just come play and make go get get yourself a contract. And, like, you'll be a free agent next year. Or, like, sign some deal where they agree not to tag him or, you know, like. Right. You know. That's what you should do. Yeah. Right, especially if, considering if, I think there were people in that building that wanted to keep Baker and just play on rather than sign Deshaun Watson. Well, that's what I was going to ask. If you if the Browns could rewind six months, what do they do? they still, I mean, they don't they don't make the trade, right? Well, they didn't do a very good job of doing their due diligence. I'll tell you no, that. I told, I told you that a long time ago that there were teams that said, "Hey, there could be more problems here coming up." And there are pro- there are more problems. I mean, sixty six masseuses in in seventeen months is it, it's difficult to comprehend. No, it's just it's it's amazing to see it come out, and it's horrific to read. Yeah, it's brutal. Um, Brian Burns at 76 is interesting. He's a guy where, like him and Derwin James, just sort of looking at younger guys uh, who could. Yeah, like he'll probably be up higher next year. My, my lot is another one. I mean, he's going to be up higher next year. He's outstanding. I mean, he is, by the end of this year, he'll be their best offensive lineman, and there'd be no question about it. I think I saw that like PFF had him rated as the number two tackle last year. I don't know if they, I didn't see that, but he was good. Yeah. Um, a lot of Eagles on this list. You like the Eagles? In Eagles, Eagles are talented, man. Yes, they are. They have a my ton Eagles. of talent. Huh? My Eagles. It's my what team. This year. I pick them to win the division. You did too? Not good enough for Jason Kelsey to make the list? No, and, you know, no. How many How many Eagle offensive linemen you want on the list? All you of got them. Lane Johnson too. All of them. <laughs> Give me Isaac Samuel. Look, it's all about Jalen Hurts. If he takes the next step, they're going to be outstanding. If he doesn't, they'll be looking for a new quarterback. Does he take the next step? I think he does. Ooh, I think yeah. he got better. I think he got better as the season moved along. I really do. Getting AJ Brown will help them. I think you know, defensively, they've added some nice pieces. I think that team has a real chance to be really good. Super and Bowl I good? think the Cowboys have issues. Yeah, I agree. You think that well, I mean Super Bowl good would have to be making one of your runs. You know, it's not a team that you look at. There's three teams in the NFC. You say, okay, these teams are going to be in it. One is the Rams, one is the Packers, one is the Bucks. The rest, any other team that's in it, going to have to make a run, get hot at the right time, and make the run. You can't just say they're going to be there. I think Washington's going to be better than people think. Really? Yeah. And you're the first person I've heard that's high on the Commanders. Well, because people like to bash on Wentz. That, and- that's true. Yes. And I, he's a, a significant upgrade to what they had. Okay, significant. And Fair. they got. Remember, we thought last year their defense was going to carry them, and they were terrible early on. But then they settled in, and you know they had injuries, but they settled in. The corners struggled. They played much better in the second half of the season once they adjusted to the system. I think they're. You know, people look at their receivers. Their receivers. You know, please. Oh, McLaurin's not there. What do they got? Sammy will be back. I think. Diami Brown Dotson. is going to be a star. They got Dotson. I mean, let's not forget that's speed too. They have, they're fast. Yeah, if Wentz if Wentz plays well, they'll be a good team. But if he stinks, then they'll stink. Um, Dynamite Dave in the chat wants to know. He's essentially asking about the 49ers. Uh, Nick Bosa. He asked first. He asked about Trey Lance. Uh, Trey Lance did not make the list. I can confirm that uh, without looking. Um, yeah. Trent Williams. Is Trey Lance going to overall. start the entire season if Jimmy Garoppolo is on the roster. But Dave, Dynamite Dave, Pete's got like – he has three 49ers in the top 15. <laughs> like, and then Debo at 26. Like, he's very high on the 49ers here. Yeah, um, I love the 49ers team. I just think it's all about whether what Trey Lance does. And I, nobody can know what Trey Lance is going to be. Like, like no. even the 49ers can't be 100%, 100% sure what he's going to be. Um, but to answer Dave's questions, Trent Williams at 8, Nick Bosa at 12. 
George Kittle at 15, Debo at 26. I mean, if you want to nitpick, you could push him higher. That's a lot of 49ers in the top 15 already. Uh, and then you also had Fred Warner at 38 and Eric Armstead at 80. I mean, that's a bunch of dudes in the top 100. Who else does he want in there? I know. <laughs> so Trey Lance can't make it. He hadn't played. Dynamite Dave? Would Alex Mack have made it if he hadn't retired? Maybe honorable mention? Probably honorable mention. Okay. How I, I mean, Lincoln think, Tomlinson was played really well for him last year, but he's gone, you know? So, yeah, I was a little worried about that offensive line. I know Kyle Shanahan can coach him up, but I mean, you know, that's. Yeah, I mean, Alex they, Mack they is had, a big remember McClinchy was hurt and they still worked around that. They're, they're good at working around it, but you're right. They had uh, inside. It could be a problem. Quentin Nelson at 37, you could argue is too low, but I mean, whatever. Uh, I don't see that. But I think all back here. There's a tendency of everybody to overrate him a little bit, I think. I don't know why, but they do. Okay. I mean, because he's, it's because he's like the one player. It's like him and Trent Williams are like the two guys where even an idiot can tell that they're good offensive linemen. You know, like yeah. you watch and you can like, like oh, you Zach don't have Martin, to be. Zach Martin, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Martin's, Martin's just, I mean, Martin's going to rack up all pros and pro bowls until the day he walks away just out of like yeah. name value. Those three, you can, yeah, you can tell. But yeah, anybody can watch him and, and 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 see it for sure. Martin's sixteenth, by the way. Um, oh, uh, Simmons Stim asked, interested to hear Pete's thoughts on Von Miller and whether he climbs back up the ladder next year or regresses. Feels like his playing time could be managed to stay effective and high up the list. Von checks in at twenty ninth, which I look. I and look. He and Von's your was, dude. Yeah, I love Von. And there were times last year when the Rams got him that they were wondering if he's the same guy. I know this because I've talked to people there. And then all of a sudden, the switch went on, and they go, oh, okay, <laughs> he's the same. So they don't I, win the I Super Bowl Von, without him. No. And I think the Bills got exactly what they needed. Sack, fumble, game over in the fourth quarter. you got to be able to stop those quarterbacks. You have to stop Patrick Mahomes and gang in the fourth quarter and overtime. Sack, fumble, game over. Do you do you think that um the Vaughn signing is is it more about the Bills saying all right we we saw what the Rams did like a guy like Vaughn could put them over the edge or is it is it at all um an indictment on like Boogie Basham and Greg Rousseau and and no, their... I think it's just building on what they did with those guys they drafted those two guys with an eye on getting Patrick Mahomes down yep they didn't do it well enough. So why not add a veteran who can come in and teach those guys the tricks of the trade? So I think Russo is going to be really good. I think Basham's got a lot of talent too. I think they're going to take the next step up. That's a good defense. Yeah. If like, if everybody's health, if, if Trey White's healthy 2022, like the bills could have the best defense in football easily. And they drafted the corner in the first round. It's going to be a good player. Kid out of Florida is a good Elon, player. Yeah, and, Elon, yep. They got Evans. So I, I think that's a, I think that's a talented team. Yeah, you know they've been little at times on defense, and that's hurt them. But I, I think they're going to be, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be really good. And they put a lot of pressure. They're going to be one of those defenses. You play with an offense like they have, you put a ton of pressure on the, uh, you know, the other offense to keep up. You're going to have a lot of. Pass I mean, Vaughn could be right. teeing off the entire season. Right, right. Hmm. You gonna pick the Bills with the Super Bowl this year? Of course. Okay, just checking. Um, yeah. All right. We held you longer. Than I, you I tell everybody when I see him, I go 13 seconds, 13 seconds. Because they, they, they would have won it last. You, you, you agree with me. on They would have beat Bengals at home. Yeah. And they would have beat the Rams. I won't concede the Rams, but they would have <laughs> they they beat the Rams. They would have been favored. That's for sure. I actually ran into <laughs> uh, some Bills fans downtown last night. You know, I was telling the story. This uh, So we were getting drinks for this concert. And um, this lady, like, she was like, basically like, forced her way into like taking over some um like some of the space at the at like the corner of the bar and she and like so i was like she was like telling me she was like i'm infringing on your space i was like well infringe away and so you ever told you the story about how um when i was flying back from fort lauderdale and uh i sit down the seat and you're you're the king of like you know you like to jockey for your arm space right yeah yeah you gotta and so like i sat down and the guy next to me is like taking up like the whole freaking armrest so i'm like all right i'm like Working every I can't like the guy's arm won't even like can't even get like the flesh to move like it won't even shiver like I'm like, and I've got like everything I got into it and finally I turn and look it's Zach Thomas <laughs> his arm is just not moving at all and he looks over at my screen and he's like you work at CBS I was like yeah he's like oh cool he's flying to Raleigh he's going to Greenville to see his son play football but he's like 
you know Pete Prisco? I was like, I do know Pete Prisco. He goes, <laughs> he goes I kind of like him, but tell him I said he sucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> did like you that. get any of the armrest? No, hell no. Why didn't you just say, hey, Zach, give me a little of the arm? <laughs> We ended up talking the whole play around. He's a great guy. Like you I, still didn't get any of the arm rest. You, arm just, rest. you didn't joke with him and say, "Hey, Zach, give me some of the arm rest here." I don't even think he noticed that I was pushing him. I don't think he like didn't even register. Like think about those those meaty forearms and my little like bony. I mean, like he's like, what is this little mosquito hitting? Yeah, I do. I play the arm rest game, and I'll say something to somebody first. Hey, you know, come on, dude, give me a break. I gotta have little here. I, I was trying to write and I was like about to say, that's when I realized who it was. Um, one more question for you. Caleb Campson wants to know, does Pete think Travis Kelsey moves up or down this list or stays about the same? I think he's going go to go up. I, don't think, yeah, I didn't think he played as well last year. No, he definitely didn't. No, and I think he's going to go up. I think they're going to get him the ball more. I know they keep talking about they're going to run the ball more and all that, but that's not who Andy Reid is. Let's be real. They're not going to run the, they'll run the, maybe they'll run a little bit differently. And situationally, but Travis Kelsey's going to catch a boatload of passes this year. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so he may, it should slide up a little bit if if his, I agree. If his Kittle, age, if, both if he and Kittle will be higher. Remember, Kittle had the injury last year yep. and, and didn't look the same either. But they'll both be higher. Well, and you would think like if Lance is under center, they may be even more run heavy just to try and ease some of that burden off of. Him. If that's the case, then you know, Kittle. I mean. I, yeah, I would expect I could see Kittle moving up as well. They're close. Those two are close. The guy that doesn't get his due is Mark Andrews. Yeah. Mark Andrews is really good. Yeah. He's real good. And he can block. They all three of them can block, by the way. When and Andrews is in that offense too, that's like not exactly like pass catcher friendly. I mean you And know. he's and all he does is catch passes and yeah, touchdowns. Just soaks up touchdowns all the time. Um all right. We we held you ten minutes longer than I meant to, but that's that's okay. right. This is fun. Now we got to go. I got to go run to the office so we can do it again on HQ. That's right. For uh, if you're watching on YouTube, 4 p.m. Eastern time, CBS Sports HQ. Me, Pete, Ryan Wilson will be on there. We'll be breaking down the top 100 list. So fire that up. If you're listening, missed it, but you can always watch it replay on CBS Sports HQ's 24/7 Streaming Sports Network. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, Pete. As always, buddy, a pleasure.